I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good day, good day, Kenneth Cooley. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful day? It is a beautiful day, actually. I mean, weather's probably very different uh, where you are versus where I am. Um, but it's a very nice, crisp, cool winter day here in Edmonton. There's a few inches of snow on the ground. It's, uh, it's just as it should be. Yeah, love it. Well, hey, my friend as well, I can tell you that there is an email that I can press send on, which is an email of Caribbean Sunshine any and every time you're ready for it. Yeah, um, I like the cold. I really like the cold, actually. Okay, so, okay. Uh, well, I put that email in draft then. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But can it please do tell me which of your talents or tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time in life? Well, um, it would seem to be primarily through the podcasting side of things, um, because that was obviously uh, I'm assuming at least that's, you know, um, what drew you to reach out via LinkedIn. Yes, it um, was. it's something that I got into a little over two years ago now, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, and it's funny because in both cases, it was kind of more. I'd never really done a lot of work with audio before, um, really of any kind. But in two separate cases, I sort of took a look at communities that I was part of and realized that there was kind of this opportunity to use um, podcasting, which, you know, is nice. The barrier to entry is fairly low, um, which, you know, was the real draw for it because, you know, at the time my resources were kind of strained fairly thin. And so, you know, the fact that it's relatively easy to start a podcast for not a heck of a lot of money. And, um, you know, that, that was certainly a big draw there, but it was kind of just identifying within two different communities that there was this opportunity and in some ways this need to um, have weekly or biweekly sit down sessions where I could pull a few people together and we could discuss a topic relevant to the community. And then, you know, sort of build up the community around that a little bit. Uh, one of those was uh, video games and a particular video game fan club that I'm part of, um, The Ultimate Dragons, and that's where Spam, 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 Humbug, my first podcast, came out of. <laughs> and then a few months after that, I because uh, I'm also heavily involved with the scouting movement, I was looking around for some Canadian podcast content um, related to scouting. You can find scouting podcasts, but most of them come out of the United States. And it's good content, but the U.S. program is a little bit different than how the Canadian program is structured. And so it was kind of a case of where, well, there doesn't seem to be any Canadian podcast content related to scouting. I guess I'll create some. Um, and that's how scouting stuff took off. So oh, well, that is intriguing. You know, I was, I was, I was searching for your podcast, right? So I'm searching <laughs> like, this is it's just the funny thing I need to share, right? Because I was searching in iTunes, spam, 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 humbug and scouting stuff you should know. Right. And I'm like, why isn't this coming up? Eventually I find spam, spam, humbug. And I listen to that. Right. And it's only now that I have your LinkedIn profile up in front of me and I'm seeing scouting stuff you should know. I'm like, oh my, I missed that. And I'm seeing your, the, the, the logo right there in the background. Right. Which is the scouting logo, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, so I'll definitely get around to listening to that. Uh, um, and spam, 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 humbug. I love that the, the conversation style that you guys are having um, surrounding gaming. It's pretty intriguing. Did you shelve that podcast? No, um, but I had to drop it to bi-weekly. Okay, um, fair just enough. Just because my schedule got completely upended over the summer with the birth of my son. Congratulations, our congratulations. Uh, thank you. Wow, wow. He's, he's, it's delightful, but it definitely cuts into the time one has for um, sitting down and recording. But I am actually going to try and pull a recording session together uh, this Friday, okay. which would make for like we released an episode last week. And it, it's good because I've got them now on alternating weeks. So yeah, Spam Spam released sense. last week. Yeah. Scouting Stuff is releasing today, yeah. the 50th episode. 
and then next week it'll be another spam spam yeah so you could have technically like a two week space between um the next it's pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool yeah love it love it love that it's what i can manage for now yeah which is cool which is a lot actually for having four children um it's it's actually a lot um so definitely keep that going but can it do tell me um given the challenges that you've um uh, uh, gone through with the changes of life um natural changes of life if you would why will you continue um i think the main thing in both cases is that like it's been a real benefit to the communities that i'm reaching out to with these podcasts um i've had countless uh members of scouting um, mostly Canadian, because of course there's more people like me who are just like, Hey, I like podcasts. Is there Canadian scouting content? Hmm. Well, now there is. And I've had a lot of people reach out and just say, you know, like, thank you for doing this. Like, it's just so nice to have the Canadian perspective reflected, um, in the podcast that I'm now able to listen to. And, but not just Canadians too. Like I have people from Australia that listen and Ireland and the U S and so it's, <clears throat> it's actually a really neat opportunity and I'm going to try and do this more in future episodes to, you know, sit down and actually compare and contrast with people like how we do scouting in Canada versus how it's done elsewhere in the world. Because there's obviously a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of differences and it's kind of neat to tease those out. And then people who aren't necessarily as aware of what some of those differences might be, or even how widespread scouting might be, it's an opportunity for them to learn something as well. And then um, with spam, 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 humbug, because it was always designed as a get together point for a particular gaming community. Um, it's going to continue being that. And I'm, I'm very happy to sort of continue that, um, continue that practice with them because it's, it's co- like, you know, we don't, there's a lot of video games podcasts and I mean, you know, I don't expect I'm ever going to send mine up to top charts but it's nice to approach it from a different angle because we're not just talking about, okay, well, this game came out and here's our review of this game and here's what I've been playing this week. We, you know, we'll sometimes talk about what we've been playing lately, but a lot of times we sort of go more into like the either behind the scenes stuff. So like we recently had a two episode uh, thing with one of the original designers for Ultima online. And he was telling us all kinds of stories from the development of the game. Um, Or we actually like, pick apart things at the design level and start talking about the mechanics. Um, So it's a little bit of a different take rather than, you know, just getting into, Hey, this is out and these are the sales this week and whatever else. So, yeah, it's, it, it came across um, as a really gentle conversation as to how what you're doing realistically impacts um, adulthood. That's that's what it came across to me because one of the guys you were speaking to, um, he was fifty, right? He was over either fifty or over fifty, and he was just talking about you know like online gamings, like on. So it's M O M, is it M O M, the online MMOs, MMOs. massively MMOs. multiplayer online. And there we go. Insert whatever. Yeah, my apologies. So yeah, and he was just talking. You know, it's, I just I'm just not able to do that um, with readers, right? He said readers um, that much because hey, I don't have time, right? And it felt good to yeah. just see the interaction with um, what is occurring. So I, I actually enjoyed the conversation that you were sharing there. Um, that being said, Kenneth, tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. Over the last three years, scouting. Uh, I'm heavily involved with Scouts Canada. I am a scouter for, uh, we, we call them Beaver Scouts. So these are youth aged five to seven years old. And then I'm also now a scouter for the Cub Scouts. Uh, these are youth aged eight to 10 years old. And basically, like my eldest daughter enrolled in Beaver is actually about five years ago and has stayed with the program since. And then now my second child is also in Beavers. My eldest has gone up to Cub Scouts. And so that has been a very constant feature of my schedule week in and week out, um, devising programming for the youth, running programming for the youth, and, you know, just trying to impart um, knowledge to, Mm. to young boys and girls. So the beavers is um, boys and girls, and then they go into either Boy Scouts or Girl Guides. Is it like that? Nope. No? Nope. Cub, uh, no. Scouts Canada has been open to boys and girls. It's been fully co-ed for 20 years now, Wow. actually. Intriguing. 1997. 
Okay. All right. There's a there's That's like a, a local Boy Scout in Trinidad, but again, it's Boy Scouts, and then bo- those are boys, and then there's the girl guide separated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we still have the girl guides here as well, but no, Scouts Canada made the decision to go co-ed um, quite a number of years ago, and now, of course, Boy Scouts of America just made the decision to make their program co-ed starting in 2018. So it's interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, that yeah. play out for them, yeah. you know, now, you know, from my side of the border with the perspective of, okay, well, we've been doing this for 20 years, so let's see how that goes for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Love what you're doing by bringing the information to people that are willing to access it without um, the bureaucracy that's necessary. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Kenneth, where's the best place for people to go to connect with you? Um, oh, gosh. You can find me on a whole bunch of different places, but. The two podcast Twitter handles are at Ultima Codex, U-L-T-I-M-A-C-O-D-E-X, and then at S-S-Y-S-K podcast, um, facebook.com slash scouting stuff podcast. That's also the Instagram URL. And then uh, facebook.com slash the Ultima series. Um, Those are probably the easiest ways to reach out to me. I'm on social media fairly consistently. And so like I get messages at those pages all all the time and i can respond um you know within a few hours usually okay well can it let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful warm blue caribbean water mm. can it, what is your earliest childhood memory uh, i think i was about four years old and i came up to my mother in the hallway at our house with the, uh, to me, shattering realization that I was not a cartoon. Oh, really? Oh, really? So why do you think this memory is, is, is like, in that, uh, like, context, the cartoon context? Um, <clears throat> because I really liked cartoons, uh, being a four-year-old child. And uh, in particular, like, we were, we were big consumers of, like, Looney Tunes. So, you know, yeah. I was chagrined, I think, at the thought that... Um, I think I had actually like bonked myself just a few minutes beforehand. And I had, was kind of really upset at the fact that I was just not as malleable and as uh, resilient to falls from heights uh, as say Wiley Coyote tended to be. <laughs> yeah. Coyote definitely took some falls, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That is intriguing. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Sure. I love the idea of the connectivity of reality that you bring on another layer of life and um, what you're doing via teaching your children uh, via um, the scouts, if you would. Um, But at the same time, the comparison to the extremes, if you would. So on one side, there's the gaming side, which um, really gets you into the, the unknown, if you would, or the unreal or the imaginative and then as well the real untouched person that is is interacting with um, everything that's nature to survival if you would and i just love how that mm-hmm. interconnects and to see that from an early age where you realize that to know where you're not only realized it but you've actually you're actually helping a lot of others um, realize that is pretty intriguing to me i like that interpretation that's cool you're welcome. You're welcome. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Gosh, 12. What year would that have been? <laughs> that would have been, you know, it probably would have been something from the Lion King soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It connects, right? It's like, it's like you're the, um, you're like Musa, right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Hey, Kenneth, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Are you ready? We're going to move pretty quickly here. Okay. All right, Kenneth, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? I am. Well, you have children, right? You said you have four children, one newborn. Do you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Um, nope. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Um, definitely more than eight, especially right. because I work with computers. Yeah. Well, Kenneth, after 1001 Conversations in three months in 2016, I came up with a workbook, the name of it being called Yours, which stands for your own unique real self. The idea being you answer questions that are reflective 
um, that connects you hopefully to your own unique real statement, a.k.a. your mission. If you, Kenneth, had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Kenneth Cooley, what would you say that is? That's a good one. Um, I think, you know, if I have a mission statement, it would be that I want people to find and have adventures, Mm. real or virtual. And for me, the first adventure is faith. Mm. Love it. Kenneth, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, Just thank you for listening. And yeah, please send me a message. I'd love to chat. Love it. Kenneth Cooley, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you kindly. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.